Okay, if we could uh, grab a seat, we'll get started here very shortly. Okay, looks like we're ready. Thank you for, uh, for coming tonight to uh, Junior Orientation. I think you picked a, a great night. The parking's a lot easier to get into uh, in the evening as opposed to during the school day when sometimes it's tough to park out front. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to uh, the senior high school. My name is John Kreider. I serve as the building principal. Tonight I'm joined by Dr. McEwen with me. She serves as the assistant principal. And what we have planned for you here this evening is uh, a brief orientation. We plan to be about a half hour and then after that half hour give you as students the opportunity and parents as well to work yourself through the building, take a look at your locker, make sure that it opens. Main goal here is to make sure that you're up and running and prepared for the first day of school. Uh, many of you come here to, to the senior high school with previous experience to the building. Some of you are brand new to the district, uh, but nonetheless tonight's orientation will um, help acclimate you with a lot of different uh, procedures that we have in place. So the agenda that we have here, uh, brief little introduction, uh, talk about the instructional day, talk about our building floor plan, talk about how we go through and monitor attendance, the different types of technology that are available uh, to you, some expectations, uh, getting involved with, with student life, and then we'll close up with some, some open questions. So first part, as far as the instructional day, very similar to the intermediate high school. We begin our, our school day at, uh, at 725 for instructional components. Uh, but prior to that, as far as arrival to the campus, students who uh, are transported by our school buses, our school buses will drop off out front in the very front of the building where many of you entered the building this evening. As students get dropped off the bus, we ask them to, they can report their locker, get their supplies for the day. And then they stay down here in the first level until the morning bell rings at, at 720. Students who get dropped off by parents, we ask at the traffic light when you take a right onto campus that you follow to the right of the building and go around the back. And at the back of the building, go the whole way down to the last stop sign down by the athletic entrance. And right there is a nice stop sign and several students can get out at the same time, enter the building through the athletic entrance and come in through the building that way. Again, visit your locker, uh, then use that time to report to the cafeteria and meet up with friends. And a lot of students take advantage of that time to uh, work on some homework, simply collaborate with, uh, with their peers and just use it as a socialization time uh, before the actual school day starts. If you're a student driver, we ask as you enter campus, there are parking spaces down on the southern lot. Uh, all of those parking spaces that are designated for students are marked with white. Anything on the campus that's marked in red is designated for staff parking. So we have a lot of parking on the, on the southern end. And if you are driving or if you're coming with someone else who drives, then you just also enter the building through the athletic entrance as well. You can come in. Uh, we also serve breakfast first thing in the morning. That begins sometimes between 645 and 7 o'clock. It stays open until that 720 bell rings. And at 720, that's the opportunity then for all students to, to move to their instructional spaces. Uh, the school day then formally begins at 725. That's the first period class. And again, you'll have the opportunity to find your first period class uh, this evening as you, as you go through and take a look at your schedule. Uh, that first period also serves then as homeroom. So each of our periods are 42 minutes in length. So the first period starts at 725. Then at 807 is the beginning of our, of our homeroom time. Homeroom is a very brief period of time. It allows us to run morning announcements. It uh, provides students with the opportunity to move to other classrooms to help get help from other teachers who may not, if you may not necessarily have a study hall, you can schedule time to, to meet with another teacher. Uh, and you can also, if you didn't have the opportunity to get breakfast in the morning, you can report down to the cafeteria to, to get breakfast. One thing that's important, if you do go down to the cafeteria for breakfast, we ask that you, you purchase something. Uh, we don't, it's not just a, a pure socialization uh, time period. If you purchase something, 
that gets recorded and then sent back to your homeroom teacher. So that's documentation then that you left your homeroom and went down to the cafeteria to, to be present down there. Um, once homeroom is over, then we progress through our schedule. We move through then periods two through what we have 11 here. It's technically a nine period day, but in the middle of the day, very similar to if you were with us in the middle, the middle level, in the middle of the day, we have periods five, six, we have periods six, seven, seven, eight, and eight, nine. And that allows for our lunch periods during periods five, seven, and nine. The lunch periods are abbreviated. They're about a half hour each. And then the instructional periods are 42 minutes. So by taking the, uh, the lunch period and, and compressing it a little bit compared to the regular schedule allows for more instructional time. It gives us an extra two minutes each period uh, that we're able to pack a lot of information in by the end of the school year. At the end of the day then, the, the school day ends at 2.15. Uh, you should be receiving, if you haven't already, information from our transportation department that gives you information on what school bus you will ride here in the morning, what school bus you will take home in the afternoon. In most cases, they're the same bus number. But at the end of the day, all of our buses pick the students up in the front of the building. And during the first week, we give a little bit of extra time for students to get acclimated with where their bus will be. From that day forward, wherever your bus is on that first day, if it's first in line, second in line, third, fourth, um, it will be there for the remainder of the school year. During the lunch periods, we'll have posted uh, where each of the buses are so that you'll have the time during lunch period to find out where your bus is going to be whether you're a first wave or whether you're a second wave bus. So first wave buses usually leave here around, set, or around 2.20. Uh, first, day, first couple days of school, we hold the buses a little bit. We make sure that first wave students all get on. And then second wave, the, the buses that come up from NAI generally get here around 2.30, 2.35 or so, and then those buses board and, and you're on your way home. Um, we do have a lot of after school activities that students are, are able to, to stay around for, for after school as well. Uh, as far as your locker bank, uh, all juniors this year, your locker bank is locker bank B. So you should see in Tyler for your locker number and the combination that, that's printed on Tyler. You'll see that your locker number begins with a B. That's this locker bank that as you leave the auditorium, if you take a right, lots of yellow lockers that are, that are sitting out there. Uh, your locker bank will stay there as juniors. And then as you progress to seniors, your, your lockers will stay in that same area as well. Uh, our senior lockers are exactly opposite of that locker bank over towards the, towards the athletic wing. Building floor plan, it, it uh, Nash is a much different layout than what you've been accustomed to. We have steps. That's one of the things that our students talk about is that they're going between classes. There's a lot of steps. So you get good exercise in, which is nice. Um, as you take a look at your schedule, the easiest thing to take a look at, there's some common sense kind of things when you read room numbers and then there's some other little shortcuts and tricks to understanding your, your room numbers as well. Uh, as you look at the room numbers, anything that begins with a one, naturally that's on the first floor. If it begins with a two, it's on the second floor. A three is a third floor. On the first floor, what you'll notice is that uh, many of our art, art classes, technology education, family consumer science, and music, you'll see that those classes start off with a one. Many of those classrooms, as you exit the auditorium and take a right, they're over on the back side of this wall over here. Uh, there's two separate hallways for, for those wings. So family consumer science, art, tech ed, and music, a lot of those classes are, are right here on the first floor. As you move up onto the second or third floor, so if your classroom begins with a two or a three, it tells you which, which level to go to. And then the second number is very important. When you get up to second and third floor, the floors, they look identical to each other. But the second number is going to be a number between one and six. And that basically represents the hallway. So our hallways are numbered so that the first hallway runs parallel to the front of the building. It's located out here, hallway one, followed is hallway two, three, and then hallway four is in the back of the building. So one through four, they all run parallel to the front of the building. They go this way. And then hallway five is closest to the auditorium and hallway six is down towards the athletic wing. So when you get upstairs, take a look at that second number. That gets you into the right hallway. And then from there, the last number just gives you that classroom num room number and then it's pretty easy to find. So just remember that always one, two, three, four, five is over here, six is on the far end of, end of the building, which will help you navigate the building. Um, some other places of interest as you, as you leave here um, through the auditorium. On the right, you'll see the, the main office complex. You'll also see one of the windows that has the attendance office out in front of it. 
Um, any type of attendance issues that you have, if you have an early dismissal, if you come in late, if you were absent the day before and you need to turn in your excuse, all of that information goes into, into the attendance office and that's located right outside. Uh, also in the, in the main office area, we have several secretaries. We also have all three of the principals are located there. So myself, Dr. McEwen, and Dr. McGahey are in there. And then also Mr. Longo, who's our student assistance uh, coordinator, is also located in that office as well. Directly behind the main office then is our counseling wing. We have five uh, counselors. Each of you have been assigned a counselor based off of the last name. Um, and it's very important for juniors to start to get to know your counselors early in the school year. We encourage you to set up an appointment so that your counselor can get to, to understand uh, what your career aspirations are, what your goals are, so that as you start to schedule classes for your senior year, they can help to, to help give you good advice on classes to schedule and then also some uh, good direction on uh, what your post-secondary outline looks like. The next phase here, uh, Dr. McEwen is going to share a little bit of information about technology and resources, some of our graduation requirements, and uh, some other things. Welcome. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is just technology and resources. Um, one of the most important things is that you come prepared the first day of school. Uh, please make sure that you come with your laptop and that it is charged. Um, Additionally, make sure um, if you do not have laptop insurance, you never know what's going to happen to your laptop. Um, so I would consider purchasing laptop insurance this year. Um, you're going to use the Tyler website for all great information and scheduling. Dr. Kreider already said you can find your schedule on there. You're also able to find your locker, your locker combination, and you'll utilize that for all scheduling as well. Our NASH website can find all kinds of, if you've never navigated and gone on there, you can find everything that you could possibly need on our NASH website. Um, so make sure that you check that out. Naviance, we'll talk a little bit more about that, and most of you have a lot of experience with that as junior or as sophomores. Um, I know that NAI gave you a lot of assignments to start doing in Naviance, so that's something we'll briefly talk about. And most importantly, Dr. Kreider does have a Twitter page, and it's at Nash Principal, and he does shoot out every student's birthday. So um, sign up for his Twitter. They're also posted on that Nash website. Attendance. Uh, as Dr. Kreider said, um, we kind of changed our attendance procedures in the building this year. So if you are absent from school, you're going to bring your note in within three days to the attendance office, um, not turn it into a homeroom teacher. So attendance is taken in your homeroom class. Um, late arrival, early dismissal, absent from school, uh, make sure that you're turning in notes into the attendance office for those um, things. And then also keep in mind what types of things are excused. Um, from school, so those are some of our valid reasons that a student may miss school on a note. Um, school attendance improvement conference. If you miss three unexcused days, so that means that three times this school year you forget to bring your note in, we will have what's called an attendance improvement plan. Dr. Kreider mentioned Mr. Longo, who is our student assistance coordinator, he would reach out to both the parent and the student to set up an uh, attendance conference to talk about why you're absent so frequently and what we can do to get you here. Because attendance is a very vital part to your education. If you're not here, it does make it challenging for you to learn. So it's directly connected to your success. Uh, Dr. McGahey and myself frequently monitor attendance. So we'll be a resource for you. Um, as maybe a friendly reminder that you may need a note in when you're getting close to that third. But unfortunately, we also have consequences that go along with attendance if you're not bringing in your notes. And we'll go into that more next week when we have our class meeting, or two weeks. Um, if you're going on a college visit or an educational tour, you can find forms in the office. Uh, right when you walk in, there's some forms that you need to turn in within five days prior to going because the building principals do have to sign off on that. And then obviously, um, 
You can go on field trips, athletic events. We have very few assemblies, but we do have some throughout the year. Um, so those are some things that you may be out for. Student services. So when we think of student services, these are all people who you can utilize um, to assist you or someone that you can go and talk to, someone to support you. So myself, I'm in charge of the first half of the alphabet. I am A through K. So if your last name begins with an A through K, if for some reason you ever need to come talk to a principal, I would be the one that you would come and talk to. Or if, unfortunately, you ever are written up by a teacher, then you would also be in my office for that. Dr. McGahey is L through Z, so same thing. And again, we are the points of contact for academics, attendance, and discipline. I will definitely say, more than anything, we probably meet with students for attendance. So that's something definitely just to be very self-aware that you are turning in your notes. Um, your school counselors, you have Ms. Rosado, Mrs. Belosky, Mr. Smith, Mr. Thompson, and Mrs. Butner. As Dr. Kreider said, they are split up by letters of the alphabet. So again, make sure you know who your school counselor is. They will be setting up meetings with you within the first couple months of school. As Dr. Kreider said, they do want to get to know you because especially if you're going to college, you may ask your school counselor to write you a letter of recommendation and if you've never met with them, it's gonna be kind of challenging. So they like to know some things about you, some of your interest. If you tell them something you're interested in and something comes across the, their desk that they think you would like to do, they'll shoot you an email and say, hey, I thought of you. Um, so it's definitely really important to get to know your school counselor. Another support is Mr. Longo. He is our student assistance coordinator, as I stated. He, he does do our attendance improvement plans, but he's also involved with many other programs in the school. You'll see him. He'll be out in the classrooms doing lessons. He does educate um, students on mental health issues, on drug usage, on vaping. So that's something you'll see him out in the classrooms doing this year. Mrs. Tangowski is our social worker, Dr. Marshall, our psychologist, and Officer Ray is our school resource officer. So much like NAI has a school resource officer, we have Officer Ray. And you will see him as a welcoming face every day, and he will be at your lunch every day. So many of you will get the opportunity to meet with him. He does like to interact and socialize with the students. So, um, and he also comes in sometimes for some lessons and talks to the classes. Graduation requirements. So your counselor should be monitoring that and having conversations with you about how many credits you need to graduate. So if you look here, I'm not gonna sit there and read every single one of these to you. Um, these are, you need seven credits every year and by the end you need 24 credits to qualify for graduation. So those are our requirements on how you can come up with those 24 credits. But when you're scheduling classes, one of the most important things to really think about is what are your future plans? Don't take classes that may not relate to what you want to do as you move forward in life. Take classes that are related to what your long-term career goal is going to be, things that are going to help you when you're looking into colleges. So always have the end in mind when you're scheduling your classes. I know it becomes very competitive and everyone's worried about taking the most AP classes, but sometimes you need to look at what's best for you and what will help you in the long run. And definitely something to talk about with your counselors. Naviance, I'm not gonna go into a lot. We always had this slide in here because as juniors coming up, you typically didn't know what it was. But now there's so much focus on college and career readiness. You guys have already started doing activities, submitting things in Naviance. So your counselors will actually come into your classrooms within the first few months of school and begin um, showing you guys how to utilize Naviance in some different ways. And they'll start talking to you about the Common App and how to start applying for colleges, how to schedule appointments with colleges when they're here for visits. So that's something that they will come and talk to you about. And I'm handing it back over to Dr. Kreider. And thanks for the shout out for the, uh, for the Twitter, Twitter feed. My 
pocket has just been buzzing over here with a couple new followers, so thank you for the, the new followers. We do tweet out a lot of information, and all those tweets, they do go directly to, uh, to our webpage as well. So if you don't have a Twitter account, or parents, if you don't have a Twitter account, anything that gets tweeted out also goes uh, right onto our, our home NASH uh, page as well. So a lot of information gets pushed out. Uh, along with that information, this year we'll be sending out uh, e-blasts every Friday. So every parent will receive an e-blast every Friday. That uh, information that we send out will have a lot of critical information about the upcoming week or some different things coming up uh, in the future. So you've already received, I think, two or three of those already this summer. Uh, many of those have directed you towards different aspects of, of our program. So please um, pay attention to those when they come out. We do put a lot of information on there uh, that is very beneficial. Uh, at NASH, we have an expect respect policy that, that uh, talks about respecting yourself, respecting others, respecting learning, respecting safety, and respecting school property. Um, and the first that's up there is, is respecting school property. And as many of you recognize, as you made uh, that transition from middle to high school level and now coming up here to, to NASH, throughout the process, you've received a lot of different types of supplies from the school district, uh, whether it's a textbook, whether it's lab supplies, uh, whether it's a, a laptop computer, we issue a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out to you as far as uh, having school property, and it has a price tag attached to it. And one of the things we like to do is we like to be fair to to our taxpayers and make sure that anything that gets handed out to our students comes back in the in the same uh, same manner as what it was handed out at. So, as you take a look at everything that you have access to, you take a look at our facility. We're very fortunate to have a very nice facility with. Um, the auditorium here, we're able to put on a lot of uh, musicals, plays, performances, chorus concerts, orchestra concerts. Uh, it's a great building. Our athletics facilities are, are outstanding. Our classrooms have a lot of great information. And so we ask as you move through the hallways that you respect school property so that when we issue you any type of material that you turn it back in um, in the same condition. We also talk about learning, respecting learning, and that's basically that, that's why we're here. So as you respect learning, that's one of the things as, as a student and starting to be an adult learner, one of the things that you recognize is, is your learning style, how you learn, the importance of learning. And as we start to progress in, in our society, we're a very competitive global economy. So one of the biggest things that you have is your education. It's not something that everyone across the world has access to. And you take a look at North Allegheny and you recognize all the different types of awards that we have. We were just recognized as uh, by Nietzsche.com as the number one uh, high school in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, that's good feedback for us. And I think as, as students, I think many of you appreciate that and you respect it. And you, you approach learning from a scholarly approach. Uh, that when you take a look at your homework, you're doing your homework on a, on a daily basis. And when you do your homework, you're doing your own work, that you're not plagiarizing. That you're putting forth your best effort. When you show up to class, you're ready to go. You're asking questions. You get yourself engaged. So when you respect learning, it's one of the most important parts that we're here. But learning does not take place without that next one that's up there, and that's respecting safety. It's very important that as we move through this building, we create a safe environment for our students. Research shows that students don't learn in unsafe environments, and that makes sense. So it's a, it's a, it's a community type of effort that we put towards our safety. Uh, as Dr. McEwen indicated, we have Officer Todd Ray here. He's one component of our safety. But a lot of parts that we uh, rely upon is our student body to help us out with safety. And that's through uh, reporting issues that you don't feel are, are right. Uh, there's things that, that take place in the building that you know uh, shouldn't be taking place. And we ask our students to, to report those things to us. And we follow up and we address those issues and we create that environment that, that's much more safe for you to, to be in. So as you, as you move through the building, be safe. There's a lot of people here in the building uh, moving through the hallways and the stairwells. Uh, exercise caution as you move through. Our parking lots uh, can be very congested at times. It takes patience um, to get out of our, out of our uh, parking lots at some time, so uh, respect safety. The next two up there, respecting yourself and respecting others. When you respect yourself, you are the one person that has, you're, you're in the biggest charge of, of respecting yourself. And you respect yourself by the language that you use, the people you choose to hang out with, how you present yourself to others, what you put into your body, what you don't put into your body, how much sleep, how much exercise you get, that is extremely important. As you start to grow and mature, respecting yourself is, is, is a huge component and making sure that you're taking care of yourself. And as you take care of yourself, you also take care of others. And at North Allegheny, we're very blessed to have 
such a wide diversity of students that, that report to school here. And we have a great opportunity to learn about people's past. We have pe learn about people's cultures, their religions, the way that they uh, have a view on the world. We have different political views. So it's a great opportunity for people to interact and learn from other people. So as you respect yourself and, and you respect others, uh, going back to that, think about the things, like I said, putting into your body and not putting into your body as well. As you start to grow and get older, there's more temptations out there that you recognize that there are drugs, there are alcohol, there's a lot of different things that, that are temptations. Stay away from the things you're supposed to stay away from. It, everything you learned in kindergarten, everything that you learned from your parents, from your community members, you make decisions, and those decisions will definitely have an impact on the progress that you make throughout the rest of your life. So take good thought into, into those aspects. And then also just be familiar with, with all our policies and procedures. Next week, as Dr. McEwen had indicated, next Friday we'll meet with all of our juniors and all of our seniors together um, separately. We'll meet with uh, seniors first period and juniors second period. And we'll go over some of the uh, expectations as far as procedures here at the senior high school just to give uh, juniors and seniors a little bit more information on, uh, on how to move through the school day. And moving through there, becoming a, an adult learner, kind of talked about that with uh, respecting yourself and respecting others and learning itself. Um, be mindful of, of how you approach learning. Think about what your best learning style is. Take an active role. If you're not understanding something in a classroom, ask for help. Most of your teachers should, we have great teachers here, most of them recognize when students struggle. But sometimes there's, there's something you don't understand, ask. Raise your hand. If you, don't, if you don't feel comfortable raising your hand in class, stop and see the teacher after class. Many of our teachers have opportunities to, to meet with them during study halls, during lunch periods, before school, after school. They were bend over backwards to make you successful, but it goes back to you taking that initiative. They will work hard to make you successful in that classroom, but you're a very active participant in your, in your education. So seek out that help, recognize how you learn best, and talk to your teachers. They'll listen. If you're interested in learning, they're gonna love you. They will give you that feedback. They will help you and they will, they will get you along in the process. Make appointments with your school counselor. Make appointments with us. If there's things that aren't going right in the classroom, things that you don't feel good about, stop in and see us. All of us are here uh, to help you to be successful. We want to make sure that you're successful. Um, the feedback we get back from our, our graduates is outstanding. When we send students off to uh, post-secondary or students who enter the workforce, one of the best pieces of feedback we get from our, uh, from our graduates is they come back and they let us know that they were prepared. Some of them indicate that junior year may have been one of their toughest years, but they appreciate uh, what they went through here at the senior high school to get them prepared for, uh, for their post-secondary endeavors. Take advantage of a lot of different things we have available. Some of the things are, are student life. We have a lot of great uh, opportunities that, that take place outside the classroom as well. Uh, it's not just athletics, it's not just band, it's not just music. We have clubs and activities uh, that you can get involved with as well. If you visit our website, you'll see a lot of different clubs and activities. And the value with clubs and activities is you get yourself involved in something that you enjoy doing. And in the process, you get to interact with others who enjoy that. So you start to network, you start to get um, a nice um, peer group of, of friends who, who share your same interests. And again, you run into people that have different backgrounds and different knowledge and you learn from them as well. So we definitely encourage students to get involved in, in any type of aspect. Um, like I said, whether it's athletics or whether it's our, our music program, whether it's with our chorus, whether it's the, the spring musical or our fall play, get yourself involved. We do a lot of fun things here. We have our school dances. We, have, we do have a few assemblies. Most of them focus in on um, safety aspects. Uh, but nonetheless, get involved here. You'll have a great time, um, and you'll learn a lot in, in the process as well. One of the things before I took on any questions, uh, one piece that I did want to direct you to is our is our website. And a lot of the information that's up on, on the NASH webpage, uh, if, you, if you come down, especially this time of the year right here, the back to school information, if you haven't visited the back to school information, it's right here on the, on the main page. If you click on that, it takes you to a lot of information down here, one of which is the back to school newsletter, which hopefully you've, you've had the opportunity to go through and see. Most of you saw that we had junior orientation here, but a lot of information on immunizations, parking permits, and those kinds. So I think a lot of you have, have visited that, um, but give some of those pieces a, a, a click, take a look, read through. Gives a lot of important information about, about the school day, uh, in many cases the school year, and a lot of this information is the same kind of things then that go out 
um, with our e-blasts as well. So a lot of this information is duplicated. So if you're not constantly visiting our webpage, we try to push it out to you and, and get it in front of you as, as much as we can. So we promise you that we tried to keep it short no matter how long we talked. Um, tried to keep it to a half hour here. We'll open it up if there are any uh, general questions, if we could bring the lights up a little bit so I can see people now. Hey, there you are. Um, any general questions that you think uh, people could benefit? If you don't have any general questions, if you have specifics, please feel free to bring them down to us here at, at the end of the presentation. We'll be happy to answer. This time, if you want to, you can move through, uh, move through the building, take a look at your schedule.